explore what's going on. And I know many of you are here this week because of the uh, second, perhaps annual, I'm not sure how it's the one, but uh, winter talk, at least here in Tulsa, at Phillips Theological Seminary. So we welcome you here to Sacred Group this morning. And uh, if you want to turn to your uh, Hebrew Bibles now, we're going to go to Isaiah. Uh, chapter 40, verses 21 through 31, and uh, as always, uh, it has been changed slightly to represent the uh, inclusive egalitarian <coughs> perspective of the uh, Jalagi peoples uh, on the Uluwak. So we we uh, think and speak and live in that way. So, uh, and actually. Uh, while I'm talking today, I'm going to pass this book around. It's called uh, The Taos Indians and the Battle for Blue Lake, which I thought talking about this today would be appropriate given the context of the reason that you were here. And there are some pictures in here. And there's another kind of a personal reason, and this is uh, going to have some names and some families in there that uh, my wife and I are actually friends with. We just spent many, many years uh, living near, working with, <coughs> ceremony with. And I will talk more about that soon. Isaiah chapter 40, verses uh, 21 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is God who sits above the circle of the earth. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, and brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has the stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare God? And who is God's equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. God brings out their host and numbers, calling them all by name. Because God is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from God, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known, have you not heard? God is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. God's understanding is unsearchable. God gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for God shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Our reading today from the New Testament is from 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 23. 1 Corinthians 9, 16 through 23. If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But it is not of my own will. I am trusted, entrusted with the commission. What then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I become as a Jew, in order to win Jews. 
To those under the law, I become as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I may, might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I become as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessing. And today, we hear the words of the gospel. Some might find these two readings together in the lectionary are a little bit confusing, but believe it or not, it actually makes sense in some ways for me today. If you put it in the context of coming full circle, uh, God strengthens those who ask to be of good service. That's the message Isaiah seems to proclaim to the people that if you trust in God and support God, in God's will and God's intention in this creation, you will be strengthened to the service, strengthened to the cause. Now, there's kind of a different ways of looking at that, as always. And I wanna, I wanna think about it in the context of why we're here today and this week in respect to the winter talk which is about exploring the doctrine of Christian discovery. Um, when we think about it in those terms, we, we recognize the legacy of European Christianity in North America has been one of not only here in North America, but around the world, of creating Christian empire, of taking what doesn't belong to people, forcing people to convert against their will, uh, basically using tyranny and oppression to bring these things about, rather than inspirational example setting, and is, you know, making people want to be a part of that community. And when we put it in that context, I look at Isaiah and I go, well, what does that mean to those of us who have come from that generational trauma that legacy here in North America of having to strive to overcome the challenges of the doctrine of Christian discovery even in today's contemporary society. And for those of anybody who may have some doubts about this because I actually encountered an example of the doctrine of discovery this week, which I tend to do pretty regularly around here in Oklahoma. <laughs> Uh, was actually a nurse from Chicago who was talking to me about her values and beliefs and uh, and her perspective on minority peoples, not just American Indians, but also African Americans, Asians, the works. And she said, yeah, you know, bad things happen. Bad things happen to American Indians, bad things happen to blacks. But you know, I think they ought to just get over it. <coughs> and I politely listened to her, because everybody's entitled to their opinion. And every, every voice counts, though sometimes it's a struggle to honor that. Um, and I, I just asked her if she knew anything about the Doctrine of Discovery, the Christian Doctrine of Discovery. Actually, as it's spoken of by, uh, what's the author's name? Peter Yeah, we were struggling with that earlier. Pagans in the Promised Land is his book. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Pagans in the Promised Land, author of that book. Uh, he renamed Doctrine of Discovery, Doctrine of Christian Discovery. And so uh, that's usually what we go by, uh, at least through Second Who. That's the way we, we talk about it. And so um, in that context, you know, we think about as American Indians and African Americans 
what, uh, what challenges do we continue to face? What obstacles? And it reminded me of my, my friends, the Bernal family of Taos Pueblo. And I thought I might need to provide an example of the influence of what it means to come full circle and exactly what Isaiah is talking about here about God supporting those who believe and trust in God and giving them the strength, the courage, and the endurance to keep the faith and keep the work going. And nobody that I can think of off the top of my head in my <coughs> lifetime that I know of, you know, medicine elders and people I've learned from, uh, besides this one individual, his name is Paul Bernal. And his brother, grandfather uh, Louis Bernal, was a Kiva chief at Taos Pueblo, a very good friend of mine and my wife and her family. And actually, uh, what you see here, this, this was hers, and, and this was his, passed on to me in that good way. And so, uh, we come in this way thinking about what uh, Paul did for his people. 65, so almost 70 years ago now, maybe longer now, I have to sit down and do the math, but long time ago, the fight, the struggle to reclaim Blue Lake, the sacred waters of the Taos Pueblo people began because it was stolen from them by the Forest Service to be turned into a national park named after a brutal murder, Kit Carson. And right or wrong, good or bad, the Taos Pueblo people believed that they emerged from Blue Lake. To them, it is sacred ground. It is where they go every year to renew themselves as a people. And it was turned into a tourist attraction. These people have been going and doing these ceremonies and rituals and been honoring that lake and using the waters from that lake to water their lands, their crops, their livestock for centuries. And literally overnight it was gone. It turned into a public park that were being trashed. <laughs> 60 years the fight continued with Paul Bernal leading the way. For 60 years he struggled against Congress, politics, entrenched theology, polity, laws that prevented that ground from being where to be belonging to the people it should belong to. People who had taken care of it, watched it, used it, lived it, depended upon it for their survival. They never gave up. They trusted. They believed. They were empowered by God's Spirit to do what was right. Not for themselves, but for all the people. To show people of this country that there are things here in North America, there are values and beliefs, there are principles that are worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. And they won. Blue Lake now belongs back to the Taos people, Pueblo people. For how long, we don't know. That doesn't matter. Today, it is there. And that's what Isaiah was talking about. When you really believe in something that is good, wholesome, and right, that God will empower you because God has chosen us all and knows us despite ourselves and uses us even with our faults, character defects, flaws, whatever you want to call them. I got, you know, I'm a therapist. I'm a chaplain. What am I going to do? I'm not speaking those words. I think in those terms. So, God uses me despite myself. God used Paul despite himself to do great things if we are willing to do stand up for what's right, to, to 
to surrender to God's will, to depend upon God for that strength and power to endure. And God promises if we do that, right here it says, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not be faint. Okay, we have to be a little imaginative about that because at my age and disabilities, I don't run much anymore. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't. I do walk, but I'm doing a lot better than I was a few years ago. Because I went into renal failure a few years ago, and God said, you're not done yet. And wonder of all wonders, my wife gave me one of her kidneys, and everything's good. It's been almost four years now. In about three and a half years now. And here I sit. So God keeps God's promises and supports those who give of themselves in humble service. In the doctrine of Christian discovery challenges the history and the legacy of American Christianity to rethink its priorities. Are they consistent with what God is calling us to do? And for that, we turn to Paul. And in Corinthians, you know, on the service for those who might, and, and it's not right or wrong, good or bad, but for those who might literally interpret what is said in the Bible, it might say, okay, you know, I don't have to give anything for anything. I just do one thing and take care of myself. Because he, he goes in and, you know, I'm not charging for ceremony, I'm charging for service, and we don't charge. But that doesn't tell us that, that doesn't say that we don't have an obligation, a responsibility, to give all of our resources, whether it be financial, time, energy, effort, leadership, teaching, singing, uh, creating those things that are necessary to help improve the quality of people's lives. All of these are important to us and to God's service. And so Paul is speaking in this way. He says, for him, his reward is knowing that he is doing what God wants him to do. Because if he was doing it according to his will, his reward would be what he got from the people he was helping. But if he's rewarding for doing God's will and God's intention, God inspires people to provide the support to keep that good work going. So I trust in that what Paul is saying. But Paul is also saying here that we also have a responsibility, all believers have a responsibility to meet people where they are. We call that cultural competency. We call getting down in the dirt. When I was living in New Mexico, there was a song that was very popular and it was very uh, humbling in one respect because it reminded us that we all put our, own, our pants on the same way each day, <laughs> that everybody's pretty much equal. And whenever anybody was getting a little bit prideful, arrogant, a little haughty, Somebody would look at him and say, chop wood and carry water. Because that's something everybody had to do. We all had to chop wood and we all had to carry water. And then we remember. Hey, we're all just people doing the best we can each day with what we know how. And Paul is charging us to remember that ourselves. Even though we were chosen to do this teaching, it is not doesn't make us special. It makes us different. We have a responsibility to meet people where they're at, regardless of culture, beliefs, heritage, whatever. Now, Dr. Christian Discovery says different. It says everybody's got to be like us. But that's not what Paul's telling us. Paul's saying that he himself became like the people that he was reaching out to in order that they may understand and trust him. And I can tell you from my own experience and my many travels and many years of service to 
in many different nations around the world and across North America. Uh, I've lived there and I've worked on uh, many different nations. And I can tell you from my own experience that nothing pleases people more than for me to make an effort to learn their culture, to learn a little bit of their language. They don't expect me to learn everything, but it makes them feel good about me that I respect them. And I demonstrate that by showing that their way of doing things has value, in as much as I believe that what I do has value as well. And they were more willing to welcome me into their homes, into their gatherings, into their ways. And if I had come along and said, hey, you're doing it wrong, and this is how you're supposed to be doing it, which, by the way, has been told to me many times, including recently, I got a nice little nasty email telling me because somebody had saw Sacred Hoops website and told me we were all going to go to hell because we had violated the Ten Commandments. And I shared this with Leslie Dotson and Pam Holt last Saturday afternoon at our meeting. And uh, I'm sure Watkins too, this had come about. So uh, that, that was an attention getter. But, you know, that's, at least they weren't shooting at me. So there's always an upside, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway. So think about this. Think about what are your expectations of the people you reach out to? Are you honoring them? Are you practicing what God has called you to do in whatever service that God has called you to, in whatever way God has called you? Think about that. You think about what it means to come full circle. Well, coming full circle is an Indian term. Things can happen soon. Sometimes it takes a long time. But one thing I do know is that those who came from Europe with this message of you must do things our way, it is now coming full circle. Coming back around across all of North America and around the globe to all indigenous peoples to where the truth about the way it's supposed to be done is being revealed and the younger people, the younger generations are no longer tolerating the tyranny and oppression and you know bullying kind of Christianity that has dominated the world for these hundreds of years. And that is now changing. And I see this as we think next week's coming before the Sunday before Ash Wednesday, it, it's transfigur transfiguration time. And that is happening all around us. That's why we're here. And I get that hope of that message of hope from Paul here when I read this. And from Isaiah when I read that. As long as we stay true to the faith and honor what's going on, God will make something good come from this. There will be a great awakening that is taking place. We can choose to be a part of that or to be left behind. That is our choice. And if we choose to be of service and according to God's will and God's intention and not our own, then God will support us and give us the strength and the courage to endure in our journey. Walk in beauty.